Evening guys, welcome back to another video instalment. Uh, we're going to drink again tonight, West End is Porter. Cheers to you. Cracking drink mess. Anyway, we're going to talk about the HXB. HXB, where can we start on this one? Well, this bait was, this bait was conceived in uh, 2010. And the, the, the directive that got me in mind was to create a, a milk protein based boily. But I wanted to stray away from the old school formulations, which were way too high, way too high in refined milk proteins. Uh, you're talking some of these baits were, well, uh, basically 100% milk proteins, and that's way too high. Carp's simple digestive system simply cannot deal with this amount of globular of protein. Um, so what I wanted to do, I wanted to create a HMV style bait because I was big on the HMV, um, <clears throat> HMV theory at the time. I still am to certain degrees, uh, not for the catching sticks, but more for the benefits of the fish. So what I wanted to do, and I've done some notes here because there's quite a lot of what I'm talking about, so I don't want to stray off the pathway. Uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to create a balanced HMV formula, a good nutritious boilie. I wanted to make the vast majority of the protein, the amino acid profile for the carp, for the carp's benefits, to be made from refined milk proteins. Um, as I say, I didn't want it too high, so I wanted to balance formula. And it wouldn't just contain milk proteins, it would contain fiber sources, beard foods, etc., etc., etc. A good balanced formula. Uh, now, I'd use milk proteins at pretty high levels. Pretty high levels, right back to the Wedron mix, and I will do a video all talking about the Wedron mix at some point. So that's the first bit that I made in 1996, the first formula I came up with in 1996. And I tried to get very close to the old Premier Spice bait, which was a very simple formula. It was fish meal, milk proteins, CLO bird food. Very, very simple, high quality, HMV style bait. As I say, it was a superb bait that Jeff Bowers came up with there. Caught a lot of fish on that bait. Now, the Wedge Mix contained, uh, at the time, uh, the initial, the, the, the Wedge Mix, the original formula, it contained 10% lactalbumin, which is a refined milk protein from the whey fraction. Um, and it also contained 10% rennet casein. Um, both of these are roughly 90% protein, very high levels of protein, extremely good ingredients, very expensive. Now, <clears throat> I did make did make a bait in, in 2004 um, that used milks. There was no fish meal in it whatsoever. It was the first time that I'd ever used any nut meals. Uh, I, I incorporated a little bit of peanut meal in there, uh, a little bit of tiger nut meal. Uh, and I caught a few on that bait. Well, I got a few things wrong with that bait. Um, it certainly was nowhere near as effective as uh, the Wedgham mix. But I'll talk about it maybe at a later date. So there we go. This is the this was the directive for the HXB if you like. Um, I wanted I wanted a balanced HMV formula with milk proteins. Now I wanted to include um, a soluble form of casein, which I'd used in 2004. Um, the calcium caseinate. It's a soluble it's a soluble form of casein, so it's a soluble ingredient, so it leaches out of the bait. As I say, this one's about 90% protein. This is extremely expensive ingredients and the, the one that I've used uh, mainly over the years is uh, from French Armour Proteins, uh, it's called IP4 calcium caseinate and they actually use it in their hospitals and stuff for uh, people who have got illnesses and want to get some protein into a, a soluble form. Um, and now I also opted to use acid casein as opposed to the rennet casein because the rennet casein makes your bait go a little bit softer due to the, the pH of its book and then the lactalbumin is very difficult to get hold of, so I replaced the, the lactalbumin um, with a whey protein concentrate, which is a very good ingredient. Um, you have various grades of uh, whey protein concentrate, um, and I would advise you, if you're looking for the nutritional side, don't get any any for, form of it that's less than 60% protein. So, uh, and I also wanted to include the calf milk. Um, now, I don't class this as a refined milk protein, but it's an extremely good ingredient. Um, calf milk powders are the, the, the very, you know, I think they, I do think they increase the palatability of the bait. They're, they're nice and sweet. I mean, you shouldn't, 
you shouldn't really transfer human um, interpretations onto carp, but I do believe these ba these ingredients do increase the palatability of bait, and they're also very attractive in their own right. And the one I use is superb. It's absolutely superb. It's got a hydrolyzed wheat in there. Um, I have got big theories on wheat, and if it's hydrolyzed, it's you know it's producing peptide fragments that I do believe will interact with the carp's brain. So. So I thought about this and I wanted to make the HXB a very good bait in cold water as well. Now, one of the, one of the best cold water attractors that I've found over the years uh, was cinnamon. Um, you know, I'm not alone in this. I think Rod Hutchins spoke about it years ago. In fact, it was probably Rod's talkings and writings that actually put me onto the, onto the cinnamon. Uh, and I have used it to go affect cinnamon for a long time. Uh, it's a very good cold water attractor. Now, what I wanted to do uh, was incorporate the uh, cinnamon powder. Um, so I'm a big believer in the in the powder spices. Um, you know, I'd seen the I'd seen the results from the super orange with these powder spices, and obviously I'd use spices with the robin red. So I included the cinnamon powder because you're also getting different benefits from the from the powders. Uh, they're all digestive aids and do stimulate different things, different uh, enzymes in the car's body. Uh, and, and what I did with the HXB is I incorporated the cinnamon powder and ginger. Ginger is a seriously good digestive aid. Um, it promotes the uh, growth and the motility of the villi and the gut, which is very important in digestion. Uh, and what I wanted to do as well initially with the HXB, this was the initial thing that I wanted to do. So the same as the Super Orange, I wanted to keep the attractor system very, very simple. Uh, as I say, the Super Orange, uh, very simple attractor system, one liquid, a little bit of oil. I mean, there's lots of attractive ingredients, but when you're talking about classical attractors, you're mainly talking about your liquids. Now, the initial, <coughs> the initial bait, the initial HXB bait, it's only used one simple sugar attractor. Um, and I wanted to see if this was sufficient to get the carp uh, rooting for the bait and to see if they could find the bait with this simple attractor. Now, made this bait up, made this bait up in 2010, uh, caught on it straight away. Um, and the first water that I caught a carp using the bait um, was the famous home pool in the Cotswolds, uh, where the big black eye fish was in there, 50 pound mini. I went down there and the first session I ever did on there, uh, I took Super Orange and the HXB. And the water was very clear, it was early April, it was still cold, the water was still cold, but the fish were active, you could see the fish moving around. And um, the super orange, it didn't get touched, it didn't get touched from the spots that I was on. And the, these fish were there, these fish were there, and I could see the water clarity was extremely good. So I thought, right, I'll, I'll put a bright on, I'll put a bright hook bait on. So I put one of the white mulberries on, white mulberry and creams, which have been making for a long time. Uh, Radishes and Mulberry Florentine, I was still using that at the time. It was, it was an old, it was a reasonably old bottle, um, which I have stated that the old flavours are not what they were, but I was using the old bottle. Um, I've been catching on it, but uh, you know, my belief is that uh, flavours, attractors, you don't want to use them when they're too old. They do change chemically, uh, they'll still work, but they're, they're not as effective as a, as a fresh bottle that's been produced in the laboratory. So took it down to home pool, uh, as I say, and I couldn't get these fish to feed on the on the super orange. So what I did, uh, these fish were moving up and down the margin. I cast the rig across to the far side, um, walked round, dropped it in by hand, and I scattered maybe 15 to 20, 14 ml HXBs all around the rig with a bright white mulberry cream on, uh, and it did the job. I had a lovely, superb, fully scaled fish. Uh, it was £29.4. Uh, I was very unlucky. Uh, well, I mean, you're not unlucky if you catch a £29 pound draw, are you? But I was unlucky in that that fish is normally a 30. But it was a superb fish. In fact, possibly one of the one of the prettiest fish I've ever caught. So, as I say, then I took it to France a week later. Uh, I put quite a lot of it in. The same form of HXB, simple sugar attractor. Uh, I put about two kilo, maybe two and a half kilo in. Uh, put a bottom bait over the top, and I caught one straight away uh, within about four hours. So it was a hell of a lot of bait to catch over in four hours, so they definitely liked it. And I had uh, a mid twenty, a mid twenty common. You know, not a big fish for France, but certainly a good result. Um, so 
Then I actually, then I took it to another water, another new water. Uh, I did a bit of fishing on one water during uh, the warm months um, in 2010. And I was mainly using the Super Orange. And then in, in, the, in the autumn of 2010, I went and fished a new water for me in Northamptonshire, Foxholds. I had known about this water for a long time. And I took the Super Orange and the HXB. And there's two lakes there with big carp and they're only very small lakes, acre, one's an acre, one's just under two acres. Uh, they're not overstocked. And I caught a mid-20 common, first cast on the, on the Super Orange. Lovely 24 and a half pound common, superb fish, very long, very clean fish. And that was on the Super Orange. Oh, nice drink, man. Um, and we did two nights on the on the smaller pool, um, basically because I knew it was a good bet for a twenty. And I think I think my mate I went with, uh, I'm not even sure if he'd caught a twenty then a UK twenty. No, I don't think he had. So we went down there. Well, after two days, I was pretty sure that these fish in the smaller pool uh, weren't really feeding to any degree. Um, I mean, I do always believe that carp are feeding, but they were not catchable. They're not catchable. Um, so I went for a walk up to the the the, the bigger lake. Uh, it's much more difficult. Stock density is much lower. There was one fish in there that's around the forty pound mark, and there's probably five other thirties in there. Twenty odd fish, you know, nice stock. And I went up and uh, I seen a few fish fizzy, and I seen a couple roll. And I went back down to my mates and I said, "I'm moving up to that the top pool. You know, that, 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 they're the ones that I've really come for, the big whackers." Uh, despite catching the mid twenty, I mean the fish in the in the small pool were on to scrape of thirty maybe if you're lucky. Um, so I moved up there and uh, put some bait out first night. Didn't catch anything. Woke up in the morning. They were there fizzing on me. I knew I knew they were on it. I could see them. A couple rolled. And uh, shortly afterwards, um, the bobby went up and I had uh, a twenty five pound mirror. Lovely fish. Lovely deep bodied fish, thick set fish. And that was the first fish I, I caught out there on the HXB. Uh, so then it was the last night, I put some more bait in, and I had actually made the bait quite soft. I mean, even though there's a lot of refined milks in there, which do fill the bait up quite well, I kept the cook times real low, really low. The bait was pretty soft. Uh, and did the last night, put some bait in, woke up in the morning, they were still on me. Um, and there was a big common in there, at the time it was around about mid 30s, say 33, 34. There was a big ghosty in there, 30 pound ghosty. And I was watching these fish continually rolling over my baits, and I mean continually rolling over me. There was fizzing going on, they were the only two fish there, but they were showing. And I, I, I was, I couldn't believe I'd got to pack up. I'd got to be off the water for 11 o'clock, and I had to pack up with these fish on me, and I didn't get another take. Well, I knew, I just knew I was going to catch these fish on this bait. I knew that these fish, the reaction that I seen, I knew these fish loved this bait. They were all over it. Um, you know, and he was, he was just a, he was just a real good, real good confidence booster for this HFB formula. So then in 2011, when I started selling bait uh, commercially, uh, I'd got this HFB bait and a few whispers had gone out that I'd caught a couple on it and you know I mean I caught very little on it at this stage very little um, and a few people started buying it off me you know I said yeah you're perfectly welcome to have it um, and then people started buying it off me people started catching on it um, I took it on to Wedgwoods uh, which I say I've been at the club for a long time I've fished it very little for a long time um, between probably the year 2000 and 2011, I'd probably only fished it 20 times, you know, so that's 11 years, not, not, not much fishing, you know. So, I mean, that water had changed quite a lot, but we'll get onto that water probably at one time, because uh, there's a few stories from on there. Um, so, yeah, so I actually did a session on Wedgwoods uh, with the HXB um, in, in, the, in the early spring. April and had a very interesting result. It was a very, very interesting result. Uh, I got two rods across the far margin to some emerging wee beds, and uh, I think I did one night. And I had um, 
I think I had four bites, four bites, four fish, and I actually spread HXB and the Super Orange uh, across on the area. So it was a mixed area of bait. And then I put a Super Orange bottom bait on one rod and an HXB bottom bait on the other rod, and every single take came to the HXB. So that indicated to me there's some sort of preference there. Still cool conditions, the water's not massively, uh, it's not overly warm in April. Uh, so that was a very interesting result there, I'll see a little logged in my mind. And then shortly after this, shortly after this, I booked a session on the, on the Foxholes water down in Northampton. Because I knew I was going to catch these fish, and I really did know I was going to catch these fish, these big, these big ones in there. You know, some real nice fish to catch. And I knew, I really did know I was going to catch them on this HXB bait after the initial reaction I'd seen. And I went on there in May 2011. Um, and the same again, the ladder I'd been with hadn't caught many big fish, so we decided to do the first two nights, because it's a four-night session, do the first two nights on the, uh, the so-called easier water. Uh, and there'd been very little at the complex. I think it hadn't done a bite for six days when we got there. Um, and we didn't catch anything at all at the small lake. There was a lot of tadpoles in there. Had a lot of tadpoles. You know, I do believe carp can get um, preoccupied with tadpoles in the spring. Uh, and these carp, they looked like they were sort of preoccupied with the tadpoles. Uh, and possibly seemed like they got sporting on the lines. They were swimming around in groups. I mean, there's not a lot of fish in there, maybe 50. Uh, swimming around in groups. Um, they just weren't up for feeding. So I said to Jack, who was with, I said, right, I'm going to go up to the orchard. Same again, same again, last two nights on the orchard. And there's a few lads on. Uh, there's a few lads on there. Then there was a lad on there who'd caught this big ghosty. Uh, this was like, I think this was in the third weekend of the season. It doesn't open up until the 1st of May. Then this was May the 19th, May the 17th, and we went on there. Um, and there's a chap on there who caught this big ghosty, a lovely fish. It was 33 when he caught it. There'd been a few of the others out. We went up there, and there was, I think, including me and Jack, there was another two or three anglers on the lake. So it was quite busy for a lake that's just under two acres in size. There was, a, there was a little bit of weed on the bottom. I mean, it was really in the air, but there was a little bit of weed there. And uh, I found a bit of a spot, I sort of got it in my mind, it was this bit of a bit of a feature, if you like, in the middle of the lake, it's just a bit of a trough, it just drops down at the deepest point. <clears throat> and I put, the, I put the marker out, I found a spot that I was happy to present a ring on, and the first night I put a kilo of beta, this HXB bait, because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't use the super orange at all, just put this HXB bait in, um, nothing happened on the first night. And the second day I was sort of, Trained with the idea of playing more bait in. Bearing in mind that at this stage, I don't think the complex had done a fish for 10 days. Um, certainly hadn't been many fish coming out. Uh, and I took a gamble on the last night. I think I put another kilo of bait in, another kilo of HXB. Uh, I cooked it a little bit more this time. It was a bit firmer. Uh, and dispatched the rig out to the spot. Uh, simple, bottom bait out of the bag. Uh, three bait stringer, soft braided hoop lamp. Uh, and on the last morning, uh, daybreak, uh, the rod the rod went. It was um, it wasn't a screaming take at all. It was a juttery take. Um, and anyway, hit the fish. Could tell straight away it was a big fish. Jack was Jack came over. He was on the net, and I said to him straight away, "It's the big ghosty. It's the big ghosty." Uh, and we netted it. Fantastic fish, and that. That ghost, fit, that ghost carp in there was 100% the hardest carp to catch in that lake. You'll be lucky if that fish came out twice a year. Uh, there's been people on that lake that fished it for 10 years plus. And it's, and some of them never caught that ghosty. Some of them have taken 10 years and they've been regular members. Uh, it's an extremely difficult fish to catch. and you, I can see why as well. It's a later date when I watched it feeding in the margins. It was a very cautious feeder, very slow mover. Uh, it was a fantastic fish, 33 pound four ounce. So that was happy days, you know, the hardest lake, the hardest fish in the lake to catch. Uh, first fish out of there in 2011. Second fish out of there in four nights, about 25, 33, four. So you know, that just immediately told me that this bait's working. You know, the simple attractor pack, the simple attractor pack with this uh, sugar, sugar attractor 
Yeah, nothing else, no, no synthetic flavour in there, no essential oil at this stage. Uh, bang, you know, job done. Uh, I went back there, went back there in the August, um, again to this HXB bait, um, and uh, had another blinding result. Uh, I caught um, the big leather out of there, 3112. Uh, I also had one of the 30 pound commons off the top. And the lad that I went with, he caught um, he caught the big common, the, the bigger common. And there was two commons in there on the £30 mark. And he caught it on the HXP, but he, he was feeding the best super orange as well. Uh, so we had a we had a blinding result there. Um we caught three thirties out of maybe five or five, five maybe six. Uh, three thirties in one session. Some going, you know, some results. Um um, you know, caught, I think I caught, uh, I think I caught another one. Um, so I think I had three fish, I think Danny had three. So we had a good session, you know, it was a late with 20 odd fish and we had uh, we had six fish, so it wasn't bad at all. Um, and then June 2011, people using this HXB bait, Keith Wright caught a big one on it, uh, the chestnut PB for him. Uh, and then we're supposed to be getting fish fit. I wanted to get back down to this uh, foxholes in the autumn because I, I knew I was going to catch this big one in there. There was a big one in there that did 40, uh, the necklace. Fantastically long fish, big mirror. Uh, and unfortunately, we had to cancel this. Um, we had to cancel this October trip due to unforeseen circumstances. So I was pretty gutted because. I want to marry catch a forty pound deer uh, mirror in October, you know. Would have been nice. Anyway, <clears throat> anyway, comes back round to it, 2012, goes on there in the end, I bagged a big night, 38 pounds. Um and, and and the mad thing was that uh, I'd been on there in May, went on there in May after this big one, because it had been 40 in May before it spawned. And the fish started spawning while I was there, but I still pull about 10 kilo bait in there between two of us, HXB, because I knew that we were going back, get them on it, get them, give them a taste of this bait. Uh, we went on there in May, a couple of lads had some bait off me, 10 kilo HXB, went on there a few weeks later, bosh, bang, dead the bigger necklace, 39 pound. I think they had seven fish between them in that four day session, seven fish and 20 odd fish, fantastic results. And that's just again said to me, the, these fish in this lake just love this HXB bait. Um, you know, and, and by this stage, by this stage, I was um, I was developing some ideas as to why these big fish uh, seem to like this bait because we weren't catching the the smaller ones. And the smaller ones in there, a few doubles. Uh, we were catching some twenties, but we were catching very few uh, of the small fish. Uh, and, I, and I was beginning to develop this idea about uh, branch chain amino acids. You know. Uh, if you don't know what branch chain amino acid is, then it's um, these are the amino acids that uh, augment anabolism, so muscle growth um, and sustaining muscle. And it's a big thing in the bodybuilding world. And your milk proteins are the richest ingredients in these branch chain amino acids. So I developed this. This I was developing this idea, uh, and I definitely thought there was something about these milk protein baits to catch the bigger fish. Uh, and the older fish so in um, 2012 I was also a member on a uh, big estate lake here near to me Trenton uh, and everybody was on there they were catching on uh, everybody on there was catching on the super orange you know there was a hell of a lot of people buying this bait from me on there the super orange but I went on there and uh, I decided to use the HXB um, Given the results, given the results that I'd been having on the HXB, I decided to use the HXB. Anyway, I, I blanked, I blanked for probably, uh, I would say maybe 10, 10 nights. I did 10 nights using the HXB. Uh, there's a few factors involved. I wouldn't fish the snags. There was a lot of fish getting lost and didn't fancy losing any fish. And um, I'm pretty sure I was in, I was in swims where fish were a few times, but this HXB bait just did not seem to be working on Trenton. It's a very, very silty lake. You know, it's hundreds of years old. Um, and, and, and I was pretty much uh, came to the conclusion 
there was something going wrong with the attraction. The attraction signal off this bait in silt was not strong enough. So what I actually did then is uh, I started making a few tweaks to the HXB because if a bait doesn't work on a certain substrate, to me it's not a complete bait. You need a bait. I, I aim to make a bait that somebody can buy a five kilo bag of bait off me, any bait that I sell, and they can take it to any type of lake, a weedy lake, a silty lake, an estate lake, a river, whatever, and the attractor system will work in all those different environments. So what I actually did in the end is uh, I changed the HXB, I changed the HXB, I ramped up the attraction, uh, I stuck an essential oil in there, the cinnamon essential oil, um, and also a couple of other more attractive ingredients, and it worked, it worked, it did the job. I mean, I, I also I also did this as well because, um, you know, so, lots of people don't use a lot of bait, uh, and there was people buying this bait off me, I knew I could catch them more fish with these small traps, you know, one on the air and ten round it. It's nothing like uh, one on the air and a hundred or two hundred rabbits or three hundred or four hundred or a couple of key. You know, the, it's totally different. It's totally different. So I ramped up the attraction, um, and you know, it, it works. Then it works on Trent. It works on Trenton. I think. I think the first time that I took um, the HXB on Trenton uh, with these modifications. Um, which was probably, it was probably 2014 because um, for numerous reasons <coughs> uh, I'd, um, I'd not been fishing. I'd not, uh, I think I, the ticket that I had sent in the first one, 2012, uh, and then I didn't join until late 2013 again. Um, so I think it was spring 2014 that I went on with this um, HXB modified version. I found some fish. And the first fish I had in it from out of there was a 22 pound ghosty. Um, 2014, I started more of the HXB then. Um, and uh, one of the lads actually went on to Baden Hall, uh, the quarry, big fish water, big fish water. Uh, and using the HXB, um, he wasn't using the HXB bait, he was using the super orange fluoro. Uh, one of the lads, uh, he put a bit of MP in, a bit of HXB, hole and crushed. And he caught the biggest fish in the lake. And it was a, at the time, it was a county record, 45 pound, five ounce, the big common, uh, job done. And again, this just seemed to, it just seemed to cement in my mind that there's something about these milk proteins for these big cod. And you can only go on the results. You can only go on the results. Uh, another lad who, who was actually working at Baden Hall, uh, he, he caught quite well on there. HXB out of there, um, uh, winter fish as well, winter fish, the cinnamon is a good attraction, winter, it's a soluble bait, it's digestible, uh, and he had a few nice fish out of there in the winter, uh, and I think, I think the, one of the reasons why I don't sell as much of the HXB anymore as I did at one time is the price, you know, these milk proteins, these refined milk proteins, they ain't cheap, these, these, these ingredients are not cheap, you know. Um, so I think people just look at the baits that I sell, you see that the super orange catches loads of fish, it's 50p a kilo cheaper, I mean 50p, what's 50p, but it's a five on 10 kilo of bait and uh, and they see that it's catching these fish, super orange, and I think people are reluctant to buy it, but believe you me, the HXB is a super bait, a super formula. Uh, it's called some big fish, some big fish. Uh, in fact, it's called the biggest fish that my bait's caught uh, in the world. It's caught 70 pound carp in France. Uh, in fact, the lad that caught that 70 pound carp in France, uh, Mark Henshaw, uh, he's given me page of a few thumbs downs a few times for different reasons, but hey, -oh, whatever. Uh, he caught some big carp in France on this bait, uh, 60s, I think, and 70. So yeah, I mean, and also the HXB was used um, on a gravel pit in Derbyshire by one of the lads since uh, it's a lake that sees a hell of a lot of uh, bait from one of the big players because the chap who runs it's uh, associated with him. And uh, he used to catch them there consistently. He was always applying bait. He didn't fish it a great deal. But his uh, rod hours to fish ratio was extremely good. 
And he actually caught a common in there that uh, hadn't been caught for seven years, you know. And this is in a lake that's seen lots and lots of free offerings of, uh, of bait from, from a big player. So, yeah, I mean, the HXB is an extremely good bait if you're looking for something that's uh, totally different than what most companies are selling out there. There's very few companies now selling baits with good chunks of um, milk proteins in there because they're so expensive. They're so expensive. Um, and as I say, this bait has been on our books since 2011. Well, 2010, but since we started bait 2011. And as I say, it's a it's a balanced formula. You know, I'm, I wanted to make it a balanced formula because carp can't utilise too much milk protein. So the overall protein contents of the bait, I tried to keep it around about the the recommended levels for carp. I mean, it's more so the amino acid profile, but I kept it around about the thirty five percent mark. Uh, and it's an extremely it's an extremely uh, digestible bait. Uh, I mean, the milk proteins anyway, um, they've got, um, got properties that they solubilize in the carp's gut. The carp's gut is alkaline, um, and this solubilizes, most solubilizes milk proteins. So, um, very, very good, very, very good uh, digestibility on this bait. Uh, and in 2018, um, the burley water that I spoke about before uh, changed then. I always said I'd never fish it, it got stocked and it wiped a load of the original fish out, well most of them. And I went back on there in winter 2018 I was quite surprised how well these carp had grown they'd been put in there. Because they were very small fish when they went in and there was too many of them. And I caught the biggest one in there within two nights in December, you know, uh, on the HXB. And I, I, I will always say, I do believe there's uh, some sort of gravitation of the bigger fish towards these milk protein baits. Uh, and casting right back to 2011 when I launched Scientific Baits, I did do a video, uh, an article in Cartwheel all about milk proteins. Uh, and I spoke about different things, you know, I think there's a cryoprotectant mechanism with them, and I think the carp do gravitate towards these in cold water for different reasons. Uh, and milk proteins are very high in the amino acid proline. Uh, and that's uh, implicated in um, cold water protection, uh, you know, because carp are, carp are living in extreme conditions in the winter, very extreme conditions. Uh, and this proline amino acid also is um, a proven amino acid to increase feed, feed intake. If the carp eats a foodstuff that's rich in proline, it will increase the amount of food it will intake. This is a proven fact, it's utilised to this effect in um, food, food stores for people that are rearing carp. Um, so yeah, as I say, um, the HXB, it's an unsung hero. It's an unsung hero. If you're looking for a bait, that's a lot, nothing like lots of the baits on the market, a lot different from many baits. Catches big carp, it's got a good track record. Um, you could do worse than get on the HXB. And one thing I will say now, right at the end of the video, uh, somebody pointed it out to me. When I've been speaking about the uh, Super Orange on the Super Orange video, I haven't actually uh, pushed the point that it contains pre-digested fish meal. And it does. And I believe that pre-digested fish meal is essential in the HMV style fish meal bait. Um, but I don't believe it's uh, essentially for the nutrition as some people talk about. Just because it's pre-digested, that doesn't mean it's more nutritional. It is a superb attractor. Pre-digested fish meal is an attractive part excellence. You know, um, you soon find this out when you make a bait with pre-digested fish meal in. Uh, and the roach and the bream, and everything, they're going crazy for your bait. Um, and you do find the need for hardened hook baits to come into play much more when you're using the pre-dige because it just drives all fish crazy. Well, there we go. There we have it. A video talking about the HXB. Uh, it's been quite long this video, you know, half an hour. Um, and I've caught lots of good fish on the HXB. I mean, I've got a pot of the pop-ups here. And as I say, the HXB stands for hot crossbone. And that's what these smell like. A lovely, strong, bun spice aroma. But there you go. That's the HXB. So if we're going to do things in uh, chronological order now, 
Uh, talking about the baits, there is another bait I created after the HXB, the original, which is basically what the wedge and mix should have been. But I won't talk about that one because I don't sell it anymore. So the next vid in the next video, talking about the baits, it's going to be the Red Devil. And there's going to be a lot to talk about in that video. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Cheers, lads.